Hey loves, this is Bobby, and I'm here with a, another video. And this is going to be video number two for the Thousand Doors Readathon. This is going to give my quick thoughts on door two, but I am going to be talking about door three and then getting into door four if I hopefully. I will get through door three kind of fast, but I'm doing a really good time. And honestly, having the two graphic novels to start off with really helped. So let's get into it. Um, for door two, I read Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. Oh my goodness, I loved everything about this. It was fucking adorable. My heart, dear Lord, my heart. The Prince and the Dressmaker was freaking adorable and just made me so happy while reading it. Heartstopper had me just like all a flutter because it was freaking adorable. Um, the prompt though, to get into my next door, um, I'll go over more of the book in my weekly vlog. Um, so I can make these videos kind of short cause these are just kind of fun to do and keep on going with this readathon cause it's a blast so far. So, um, to get in through my next door, it was how well, if I was able to predict what was going to happen in this, I was originally going to take this as I predicted this was going to be a five-star book. It was a five-star book, but also when it came to the plot, as soon as I started reading it, started making guesses on what was actually going to happen. Totally 100% saw every trope and everything that was going to happen. Like every single part of it, I knew like immediately going in, like we're going to go here. Did not mind it at all. And that's actually an option was there was yes. And then there was yes, but I didn't mind. I didn't mind at all because honestly, I was kind of hoping it was going to go where it was going because it's a cute teen rom com -y type of love story and it's just wonderful. So there we go. Those are my quick little thoughts. So off to door number three. And for this one, um, with my option of yes, but I didn't mind was I ended up with, um, teas and tea books and Tasman or Taz, her prompt, which was Marvel. That one gave me a bit of pause because I was not sure because I really want to stick with all of my queer books that I have on my TBR little section here. None of them really seemed to fit. And then... And then I got incredibly lucky because the book that I ordered came in and it does fit. And that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by uh, TJ Klune. I have been dying to read this book. I was supposed to read this during um, Becca's Bookopoly, but that was when I hit the reading slump and I never got around to reading it. I had the um, ebook. I'm really not feeling ebooks right now, so I didn't want to buy it because I already have it and this book has not gone under like 17 bucks anywhere. Like it's like 20 to 17 bucks, which is more than I like to spend on one book. But I finally caved and I bought it. It just got here as soon as I was like going to give up and just grab a different type of book that wasn't LGBT. Um, it arrived. So it was like the queer gods just shine down on me and said, we're going to let you keep going. So yes, this, when it comes to Marvel reminds me of X-Men. As soon as I heard about it and kind of got to see what the plot kind of was, um, it sounded like X-Men. This takes place in a world where there are different, there are kids with powers. There are fairies, gnomes, sprites, werewolves, everything you can imagine. Um, the main character, he is a social worker type of character or type of person. Um, and he is going to be sent out on this very, um, secretive type of case where he's going to this house in the middle of the ocean. It's like an island is where the house takes place. And he doesn't quite know why he's being sent there. Like he knows that the, there's going to be like kids with powers and stuff, but he doesn't know why they're not telling him everything. And when he gets there, he meets these kids and he starts to get feelings for the, um, the kids caretaker there. Um, this is LGBT. This features, I believe a male, male romance. I can't wait. I've been dying to get to this damn book. Like I cannot wait to read it. I've heard literally nothing but good things. Everyone that I trust that's read this says it's amazing. So I am ready. So for the prompt of Marvel, this reminds me of X-Men, honestly, like I'm pretty sure I've read a freaking 
Xavier Magneto fan fiction like this at some point. I probably did. I'm, I'm not going to lie, but I'm excited for this. I am just hoping for a really cute, fun type of book, you know, with found family because I love found family tropes. So there we go. That is my next book. So I'm going to see how fast I can get through this. Um, I should be able to get through it in probably about two, maybe three days. So hopefully I can get through it a little faster though, so that I can get on to my next door. So there we go. That's what's what so far. I will check in again once I finish this and I head over into door number four. So bye. Hey loves here with a quick update for door number three and going into door number four. So as you know, for door number three, the prompt was Marvel, and I am going with The House in the Cerulean Sea by uh, TJ Klune. I did start this today on my way to work. Well, I fell in love with this whole leg crap. Like, I've heard so many good things about it, and I wasn't prepared to love it as much as I did. I am allowed to listen to whatever the hell I want to at work. So I read a good, I want to say maybe almost 100 pages before I started work. I couldn't put it down. I didn't want to put it down. So yes, I own the ebook. Yes, I own, I literally just bought the physical copy. Did I turn around and just straight up by the audiobook. Yes, yes, I did because I wanted to keep going. I didn't want to stop reading it and I had to get to work. So I forked over, bought the audiobook, which I didn't pay very much for it because I had the ebook um, for Kindle. So Audible, I think I paid like eight bucks or so for it. Totally worth it. Oh my God. This, this book, I loved it. It was adorable and wonderful and amazing. And I loved every single character. Linus, just my heart. I just wanted to hug him like the entire fucking book. The narrator is phenomenal. The voices are just so perfect and spot on and had so much feeling and just made me even more attached to these characters. Like I was literally standing there washing dishes and I could feel myself, I was like near the end, and it was just all so happy and adorable and sweet, and I could feel myself freaking tearing up. I don't cry, I never cry. I was sitting there like washing some fucking pans, like getting teary eyed because I'm just so happy with how this book ended because it was fucking beautiful. Like, I wasn't prepared for that. So, I'm done with door number three. I finished this in one shot at work because, you know, an eight hour shift. So that happened. That's a thing that just happened. Like, holy crap. So I'm finished with door number three. I fucking loved it. This is a five star book for me. I can see myself free reading this, re listening to it, just adoring it with every fiber of my being. And I just realized between my glasses and my hair, I, I match the, um, the cover. So there we go. That's how much I love it. I just, the whole aesthetic, everything 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 so with this completion i will be heading over to door number four and to get there the question that i have to answer is did you like the main character i fucking adored linus dear lord holy shit he is my my baby i i love him and his spare tire and his balding head and everything about him. He is my precious baby right now. Like, holy crap, I'm, I love him so much. So the answer is yes. So with that, I will be heading through door number four, which this one will tie in with Meg with books. And it is for the meme prompt. Um, I am an acquired taste. Um, this one was a little hard cause like, you know, I am trying to stick with all LGBT books. I, for the most part, most of them that I want to read either are very popular or I've never heard anything about 
So that was a little hard, but there was one. I had just bought it. I have literally heard people saying it's the greatest thing ever. And I've heard other people saying they couldn't finish it because it was like too much for them. So very much an acquired taste. And I've been dying to read it because it sounds like something I will definitely fucking like. And that is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Mohir. Mohir? Totally probably butchered that. I should have looked that up first. My bad. But yes, this will be my book for number four. Um, I'm an acquired taste. I fully endorse this as that because I've heard both sides a lot. I don't actually really know much about this. Like, all I ever see is that it's basically a lot to take in. It's very graphic in some parts and it is like a necromancer lesbian in space. Which... Fuck yeah. That alone right there makes me like love it. So that's where I'm excited for this one. Like I truly, truly am excited and I cannot wait to start this. So this will be my book for tomorrow. Um, so there we go. This will be door number four. Um, I am excited for this. So there we go. We'll see how I like it. We'll see what the next prompt will be. So I will check in with you guys later. Um, I will be talking about this in a vlog along with all the other books that I will up the, upload in a week or so. I think I'm behind on my vlogs right now. I gotta get on that. Yeah. So, there we go. Bye. Hey loves, here with the last part of the Thousand Doors Readathon. As you saw in the last video, I have now gone through door number four, and that was to read a book that was based around the meme, I'm an Acquired Taste. It was supposed to be a book that you've heard mixed things about, that you're not sure about. I ended up going with Gideon the Ninth, because I have hear people either really love this, or it was just too much, they didn't like it, it was too weird, or whatever else. I finished it today. I freaking loved it. This was five stars. I loved absolutely everything about this book. I do not have a single complaint. I was listening to this. Um, I was going to be reading it solely, but I fell in love with it so bad that I ended up, I couldn't put it down. So while at work, I request, I got the um, audiobook from Libby because I needed more. I just, I could not I didn't want to put it down so I ended up doing the audiobook on it partly reading partly audiobook because I kept switching off between the two I loved it oh my goodness you should have seen me like headphone in my ear while working and I am like since no one else could hear what I'm listening to I'm standing there looking like a crazy person because I'm just cracking up because I could not stop laughing this book is hilarious and it's badass and Gideon is like the now like love of my fucking life I adore everything about her and then Harrow is amazing. I loved everything. Like I said, I do not have a single complaint at all. Like I have nothing bad to say about this. I loved every single moment of it. I am so glad I've got the sequel already. So yes, five stars, easy, adored it. So the next prompt was, did you like the setting? So to get through after I'm through four to make my way to pick door number five was, did you like the setting? I love the setting. This was lesbian necromancers in space and kind of space because it's like, it is space, but it's like also like different kind of universe than us type of thing. But it was awesome. I loved the setting. It was creepy. It was cool. Everything about it was just awesome. So going through that door i've gone to the next prompt i will not lie i'm not actually a fan of this last prompt at all it also threw a huge wrench into my tbr that i was going for i was trying to go for all lgbt books but the prompt is language and it is to read a book that features a made up language features anything that, that kind of centers around language. Um, none of the books that I have, I know of, have any kind of thing to do with language. Some prompts I just don't like because you have to kind of know what the books are about and like kind of things like what's going on in it to be able to pick them. 
none of the ones I had on my TBR shelf that I know of deal with language, so sadly this last one is not LGBT, but I've been dying to get to it since I read this author, the first, my very first book by this author last month, and I'm cool with it. I'm gonna make up for this for the fact that literally I think every other book for this month is basically going to be queer except maybe another two more if I make it to them but I'm going to be going um with I don't know if it's Gio or Jio by Junji Ito um this is a another graphic novel I've gotten in a lot of graphic novels this month which is kind of weird for me I love them but usually I don't read like this many in one month but I started with um the Prince and the Dressmaker, then Heartstopper Volume 2. I actually just got Heartstopper Volume 3 today in the mail. I'm probably going to be making my way for that one very, very soon. But yes, so for the prompt of language, um, this was originally written in Japanese. It was translated. It works for me. Um, I started it. I am a good little chunk of the way in. I was, I've um, started this when I was on my way to work and then coming home from work. I'm actually really, really liking this. It's really weird and very creepy. And all they keep doing is talking about how bad everything smells. And I'm like, on public transportation, which is not known for smelling exactly wonderful. So it's like, what is it? smell -a vision type of thing going on. So there we go. This is going to be for the last door. Um... I will update when I'm done with that to see how this goes when I finish it. Like I said, I'm kind of bummed by this prompt just for the fact that none of my other books I know of fit. And I can't know if they fit unless I've kind of read the book or if I kind of look it up and I'm terrified of looking things up because I don't want to spoil anything for me. So there we go. I'm not too mad about it because I was dying to get into another one of his books and I was recommended that this one was really, really good great since I absolutely adored Uzumaki. So there we go. There is my last little, well, second to last little update. I will update one more time with what happens when I finish because I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen when I'm done. So there we go. That's what's what for the Thousand Door Readathon. I will check in one more time. So bye. Hey loves, here with my last update for the Thousand Doors readathon. I am officially done. I finished. I loved this readathon. It was so much freaking fun. Um, um, the last book I was reading, there we go, backwards, keep forgetting that, um, was Jayo. I believe that was what, when I looked it up, that was finally in how, because I keep pronouncing it freaking wrong and everyone else pronounces it differently. So I'm going with Jayo. So there we go. Or Gayo. Gaio? 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 I can't remember which one I originally was said that I was going to stick with. Gaio is what I'll go with. Um, I freaking adored this. It went with four stars. It was gross. It was creepy. It was hilarious and campy and total B-horror movie, which I love B-horror movies. Like, it's they're so lame and amazing. This was freaking hilarious and disgusting. Um, I was reading it while I was on the um, public transportation. This is about a fish that gets out and like everyone just, all the whole book is just them talking about how disgusting and like rotting everything smells. Being on public transportation. Yeah, it was like smell of vision So that was interesting. My whole surrounding smelled and reading a book about smells and it was just, yeah, it was a lot taken. But this was great. This is my second um, Junji Ito book. Um, Uzumaki was my first. That was five stars. I loved it. I have Tomi. I want to hopefully get to that before the end of the month, maybe next month. I'm not sure. But I am hooked. I am officially a fan. I mean, I was a fan with Uzumaki, but now two books in. I can call myself a fan now. Um, so yeah, I recommend this. This was the break though from my LGBT, what you call it, um, TBR that I had set up, but I'm still doing really good on that. But yeah, so I'm done. Woo! So thanks for watching and tuning in. Um, if you are doing this, I would love to know how far you've gotten. I'd love to know what prompts you got from the different doors. Um, 
what books you've read, just anything. Like this was so much fun and I've been following some people's updates and stuff and it just sound it's just like I love how everybody's this all over the place. There we go. Yay. So I will check in with you guys later in a vlog or who knows? My videos are all over the place right now, especially a lot of vlogs. So I'm trying to catch up, but yes. So thanks for watching. And as always, happy reading. Bye.